We're going to listen to Mr. J. Lee Lewis and the aka the killer in Jonesy's jukebox. He said he made the mistake of asking him about England and he said he wished you wouldn't have done that, but it makes for a good listen. So this was in 2004, the elder Jerry Lee, aka the killer. And let's go ahead and listen and I will give my commentary. I'm sure we'll have some good laughs. And here we go. It's a great legacy. Let's go ahead and listen. Never a dull moment. Have a good sleep. Just being that I just rolled up between the sheets, I, I'm not feeling up to par, but I'm all right. You look good. Well, thank you very much. You're, you're from uh, Louisiana, right? Yeah, Fairy Day, Louisiana. You, you still live out there? Uh, no, I, I, I have a home there, but I live in uh, Mississippi, oh. uh, about eight miles out of Memphis. Yeah. And uh, would do you like, what's the difference between Louisiana and, and the Mississippi? Not necessarily. I, I just just got to living up there, and I've lived there for about 40 years, and I've gotten very well used to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No difference between Mississippi and Louisiana. Just It's all together. Just let me tell you about that. It's all the same. Okay, let's keep listening. I, I've got a question for you. I could never figure this out. Do you think rock and roll started on a piano or on a, on a guitar? Uh, either way. Yeah. I, I put them both together and they sound good to me. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good answer. So what you did you did your record with a lot of uh, big shots that you, you just, just got come out, right? Right. Was that fun to make that? Well, I don't know if it was fun with the big shots, but it was fun for me. Yeah. <laughs> How many albums have you done? Yeah, we can cut me down. Okay. Just tell me, what, how's that? Uh, that's, that's better, right there, yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, how many albums have you made, do, do you know? No, I've made hundreds of albums. Hundreds? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't about to remember exactly exactly uh, amount. Bob, you know Barbara Alberson? Roy Alberson's wife? No, I don't know her. She said to say hi. She said you were in a band with Perkins, Alderson, you and uh, who was the other? It was another bloke. And yeah, the electricity went out. And the electricity went out? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get to do my show, Roy didn't get to do his show. Oh. But it actually was a band? You had a band together? No, we didn't, we didn't have a band together. We were just doing a show together? We were just doing a show together, yeah. Misinformed again, see? Another load of nonsense. These, these ladies are misinforming the what? Yeah, these birds, they don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you, uh, you, 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 you doing, you're doing any shows with this album, or, or what are you doing? Yeah, we're doing some shows with it. we got some things lined up. Yeah. That we're going to do. Do you find it hard doing shows the older you get? Oh, uh, yeah, I find it harder. What, what do you do to get, like, cheated up? Well, I just grit my teeth and get with it. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I just grit my teeth and get with it. <laughs> great, um, I got a great DVD of you from uh, from uh, Wembley, Wembley, uh, Wembley Stadium, right, in this 1970, when you, Little Richard, uh, Chuck Berry. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember it. It was it was great. All the teddy boys were there. It was a big show. A, <laughs> yeah, that's when I done all the Chuck Berry numbers. Yeah, <laughs> and and they in, they was all interviewing each other. You all having a go at each other. Yeah, that was that was great. It's really good. Um, do you get along with them guys, or was that more like play acting, or do you really like? Because everyone claims I'm the king of rock and roll. I'm the king of rock and roll. Is that a thing that you just used to do, or was it like? You're just having a laugh with each other, or do you really like each other? I, I, we really like each other. Yeah. We get along quite well. Uh, uh, but that wasn't just a thing we did, no. But 
I, I started rock and roll with a whole lot of shaking going on. Yeah. And uh, an encyclopedia wrote it up. That that was uh, the first the beginning of rock and roll. So you're pleased with that then? So I... Uh, you're happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with the left hand. So it seemed, it seemed right in that you had the first rock and roll single. Yeah, a whole lot of shaking going on. Yeah, who was the drummer on that? He was a great drummer. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. Nobody can't play that piano, honey, and, and, and stand on top of the piano or play it like Jerry Lee, a.k.a. the killer. And he would have been huger than Elvis. Way huger. Now, the name of this podcast is Jonesy's Jukebox, Jerry Lee Lewis. I said I didn't want to get into that. So he said that he makes a mistake of asking Jerry Lee, and, and you know not to ask him about that because that's a sore spot for him uh, when he went to England. So let's go ahead and, and keep going. What? Uh, Do you remember him? Uh, Russ Smith. Was it a band that you had, or was it a bunch of guys that were just put together? No, I was a band that I had. Yeah. I just had two musicians, and I hooked my piano up to a... It was a, a, a violin pickup to a basement amp, and it sounded like an orchestra within itself. Yeah. Did, did you produce that, or uh, uh, Sam Phillips had nothing to do with that? No. And you recorded it. Where did you record that? I was shaking. At Sun Records. Oh, you did? Yeah. That's the place in Memphis. In Memphis, right. Yeah. And uh, when you laid it down, was it done like they do in all these movies, like, oh, you're tinkering around? Oh, let's rock it up a bit, and all of a sudden, everyone rocks it up and it works. Or did, did you kind of have it knew what, what was going on before you recorded it? We just took one take on it, and and you, you played it live before. We ran through it one time. You never recorded it or played it before that. No. Wow. He, he didn't have to record it or play it for that. He had a natural talent. He did a one take on it, and that's the way Jerry Lee always played. It's pretty good, huh? Come on, what are you doing? Yeah, it's got some mileage out of it. <laughs> Excellent. Um, we're going to play a song. We're here with Jerry Lee Lewis. You'll listen to Jonesy's jukebox. We're going to play a bit of... Uh... Did you write this song? Tell me if you did. I can't remember. This is Cliff Richards. Take it away. <laughs> You're listening to Jonesy's jukebox on Indy 1031. That was Jerry Lee Lewis. And that song was called Lewis Boogie. Before that was Cliff Richard doing a song called It'll Be Me. You, you did a version of that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, you did two versions. There's like a single version, which is faster. Yeah, and a slow version. And then there's a slow one, yeah. I think that Cliff Richards version is more like the slower version, right? In the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how long are you in Los Angeles for? Uh, we're going to be here till, uh, till Friday. Friday? Then where are you off to? Back to Memphis. Yeah. Is it humid there right now? Uh, not as humid as it was. It got so humid there for a while. I thought I was going to die. Yeah. I mean, it was 95 and 100 degrees every day. And, uh, somebody asked us, somebody in Louisiana, Mississippi, is it humid? It's humid down here every day. Uh, but maybe the summertime, woo. If you're not from here, you come to Louisiana, you better get ready because it's something that you won't experience unless you're down here and you've been raised in it. If it's a hundred degrees in Memphis, it's a hundred degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you can live there. I don't know how you can do it. That heat drives me crazy. Stay in the house with air conditioning. Huh? Yeah. Do you, do you drive still? Oh, yeah. Well, you got a Cadillac? Yeah, I've got a Cadillac. What, big old? An old one or a new one? No, it's a new, it's the newest one ever that. PST, I believe they call it. Yeah. I had a Lincoln sound car, I just got rid of it. It was all right. Yeah. Oh, that's fine, car. Gas guzzler. Well, yeah, but they're coming down on the gas a little bit now. You get rid of it, they come down on the gas. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming down, but the price is going up. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. I, uh, yeah, I got a Prius. You know what Prius is? No, I don't. It's kind of half electric, half gas. 
you get about 40 miles to a gallon. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's small though. It's not flash looking. It's kind of a kind of nerdy looking, but it's you know gets you to make A to B. And right. Oh, yeah, I like that. Jerry Lee says, well, that's all you need. <laughs> this interview just seems so opposite for somebody to be interviewing, like, a legend like Jerry, Jerry Lee. It's just like, it's it's just two different worlds. But I guess that's what part of music is about. But um, he, he said, that's all you need. Oh, Jerry Lee. Nice to have you in the studio. Well, thank you, uh, Killer. It's good to be here. Where'd you, where'd you get Where'd you get that nickname from? Oh, I go back a long way. I was 15 years old. Killer. Yeah. Oh, oh, it goes back a long ways when I was about 15 years old. <laughs> about 15 years old. I was a teacher in the school, and another boyfriend of mine, uh, Cecil Harrison, got in a fight with another guy in the other room, and we were both in. The, principal's office at the same time. Got expelled for two weeks apiece. And we was walking out the gate and said, well, I'll see you later, killer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later, killer. And we'll meet you at the pool hall. And it just stuck. So if y'all didn't understand it, I understand it because, I mean, I know some people might not understand it because they don't have that southern twang like Jerry Lee and I do. But anyways, but what he says that him in the school, we got into a a little uh fight and when he uh he got expelled and when he was walking out he said i'll see you later killer i'll see you later killer that name just started and it just started yeah just cool. started and stuck did you uh did you ever learn anything at school yeah i learned uh to listen as close as i could when the bell was gonna ring <laughs> 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 yeah i didn't learn a thing at school i hated it I did too. I did. When did you start playing the old uh, ivories? When I was eight years old. Eight years old? Yeah. What, your uh, your dad or parents got you a piano? Yeah, they bought me a piano. Mm. It seems so complicated to me, a piano. Well, it was more complicated than I thought it was going to be when I got it. Yeah. But, uh, my, like in two months, I was playing pretty good. In a year, I was playing real good. Three years I was playing about as years I play now, which is not the greatest in the world. <laughs> you know, you definitely, you definitely got a feel for it. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Got a feel for it. Honey, that man's the best piano player there he is. He even took over Elvis's living room. Whenever uh, he went to visit Elvis, everybody was listening to him play. He could actually stand up. For those of y'all that had never heard him, pull it up on YouTube, watch him. He could stand up, literally, with one leg up there on the piano and play with his with his foot. And, and sit there and play with his foot right there. And then use one hand and even just stand up with one foot and one hand. Yeah, feel for it. What would you, uh, when you first started playing, Obviously, when you were eight year old, you didn't start playing a whole lot of shaking. What, what was your what was your kind of like playing at the time when you was young? Oh, well, songs like Silent Night, songs like that. What was that like? Easy to pick up. You know. Big band song. What was like? No, no. I, uh, it was mostly gospel music. Gospel music. Right, yeah. right. What did, What did you think of that movie that that was uh, about you? With a uh, yeah, anybody that's from Louisiana, mostly even Elvis, Jerry Lee. I'm trying to think of somebody else. It's just not all coming to, to the top of my mind. But um, mostly we are very, very, we're from the South, and we have churches everywhere. And he was raised in a Pentecostal church just like I was. So a lot of the, he had that uh, that Pentecostal, and you learn the singing and the the choir songs and the shouting and the the praising and all that. I thought it was bad. Yeah, I don't know anyone who's had a movie about them, especially rock and rollers, that actually like the way that their movies ever come out. <laughs> Maybe I'll like it one day. 
What, what didn't you like about it? The way he was acting. He was acting wrong. Man. It, was, it was too goofy. It was too over the top. I thought. Yeah, it was eyes were too big. He was um, overreacting. I mean, exactly. And I, I, that wasn't me. Yeah. Did they? Let's, did they? Let's talk about that stupid movie they did. With him, with that goofy looking guy, I don't even know who it was, but I know who he's talking about. Just trying to act goofy, and, and Jerry Lee, Lee, aka the killer, wasn't goofy like that. I hope they come out with a new. He deserves that. A new uh, uh, movie, bio, bio movie uh, about his life, and I'm glad they finally come out with the one of Little Richard. But I think the other one. You can't really find it, which I remember watching it when I was young. But now, knowing Jerry Lee the way I do, the movie was plum goofy acting. He speaks to you when they were making the movie, too. Well, I saw him, saw him shoot one, one scene, and uh, when I saw that scene, I washed my hands of it. I left. All right. Should have told him. Keep your eyes closed a bit. No, you couldn't talk to me, people. They were crazy. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, I, I, it's, it's, uh, there was a movie about my band, I used to have a band called the Sex Pistols. We were kind of rebels yeah. in the 70s. I know you were. And um, they made a movie about us and I, I hated I hate that too. Yeah. The guys it didn't even look like this. The guy who played me was but ugly. <laughs> huh? Well, um, you can't satisfy everybody all the time, but you can satisfy people. You can do it halfway right anyway. Halfway right, yeah, no kidding. I'm gonna have to remember that quote. You can't satisfy people all the time, but you can satisfy people if you do it halfway right. All the way. Well, we're here with Jerry Lee Lewis. You listen to Jonesy's jukebox, and we'll be right back after these lovely messages. Thanks for listening. You're listening to Jonesy's jukebox. On Indy 1031, with my guest, Jerry Lee Lewis. Thank you. How are you doing there, mate? All right. You're the man. What was the, uh... <laughs> Jerry Lee. He don't seem like he's interested in this person asking him these questions no more than, uh... <laughs> than, uh... uh just, he just seems so disinterested. I don't think he's jiving in and getting with this... This person from Australia, nothing against the Aussies, but it's just not jiving. The guy needs a little bit more spunk and bunk in him. What was the uh, million dollar quartet? Elvis, Johnny Cash, Carl Perkins, what's that? Oh, uh, that was just a picture they took, a photo they took of us. So I was sitting around the piano. And Sam called it his million dollar quartet. Oh, we gotcha. Because you always have a million dollars on your mind. Yeah. <laughs> Did you, uh, ever, how many times you've been, you went to England in the 50s, right? Right. Oh right. my yeah. God, here we go. Because you were married to a, uh, a young girl. Yeah, I don't want to get into that. Okay. I don't blame him. He don't want to get into that. Every time, I mean, I'm going to cover up. Co covered it on my channel. I'm going to cover the book. But every time he goes to talk, he's not there to talk about that. You know, I'll have to redo a thing on that. That's a whole nother thing. We're from Louisiana. It was a different time, different era. The only difference is, is Jerry Lee, we, we was taught, he was taught back then to marry anybody that you care about and love. And he married his, uh, I think it was his second cousin once removed or something. Uh, she was 13, and I think he was like, I think he was like 20... 20 or 22 I think but um anyways I'm not saying that's okay because it is not okay but it was a different time in Louisiana a different a whole nother difference the only difference is in the uh, difference in his music era was that he didn't try to hide what he did he actually married the person and the other ones had them all around them that young doing things with them and they didn't uh I'm not saying it's okay what he did or what the other ones did, but he didn't hide it. He actually married her. Never mind. I never said anything. Um, I believe in cell phones, probably. 
But you've been there since the 70s when you played there at the Wembley? Yeah, I never left. You never left? Where did you live? I never left Memphis. Yeah, you've just been there all the time? Yeah. So the only, the only time you've been to England was in the 1970s? Oh, no, I've been to England. That's, that's what I mean. I certainly didn't want to get into that. No, I, I wasn't talking about that. Well, I'm done. Now, why is he disrespecting him? He done told him he does not want to get into that. He told him that for the second time when we rewind it a little bit. He done told him, I don't want to talk about that. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about a song. I'm doing a promotion of a song. Um, I believe in cell phones, probably. But you've been there since the 70s when you played there at the Wembley. Yeah, I never left. You never left? Where did you live? I never left Memphis. Yeah, you've just been there all the time? Yeah. So the only, the only time you've been to England was in the 1970s? Oh, no, I've been to England. That's, that's what I mean. I certainly didn't want to get into that. No, I, I wasn't talking about that. Well, well I'm talking about it. <laughs> okay. mm. He said, he said, he said, well... I'm talking about it, and if anybody's getting <laughs> getting on to me for interrupting, I have to, because if I don't, my, I'll get a copyright strike. I'm just letting everyone know. So <laughs> he said, he said, I said I don't want to get into that. He said, he said, now that's enough. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Anything you want to talk about except marriages in England? I, I wasn't going to change this. <laughs> Oh my God, yo! Oh my God, <laughs> he said, he said anything you want to talk about except marriages in England. <laughs> he just told that man, he just that man, that man who just started off on a bad foot. That was the wrong thing to go ask Mr. Jerry Lee in 2004. He's elder. He doesn't feel like rehashing all that. You want to know about that? Read a book or listen to, listen to a good old old documentary. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, you've just been there all the time? Yeah. So the only, the only time you've been to England was in the 1970s? Oh, no, I've been to England. That's, that's what I mean. I certainly didn't want to get into that. No, I, I wasn't <laughs> talking about that. Well, I'm talking about it. <laughs> well, I'm talking about okay. it. Oh my mm. God! What do you want to talk about? Anything you want to talk about except marriages in England? Except <laughs> marriages in England. I was talking about how many times have you played there since the seventies? About twenty times. Twenty times. Do you like it over there? I can't live there. It's too. It's too. Too cold. No, I like it there. You know? Yeah, I like cold weather. Do you get cold there in, uh, in uh, Louisiana? Oh, yeah, my... It's cold in Louisiana. It's snowy there, isn't it? No. Don't get that bad. No. It gets cold during the winter time, but the hot summer time. Yeah, it would be good. What's any any particular favourite that you like? Oh, we got a new mix of the pink Cadillac with uh, Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. This is a new mix. We're with Jolie Lewis, she was at the Jolie's jukebox. It's a new track off the Jolie Lewis new album, The Last Man Standing. Take it away, Mr. Shovel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, You're listening to Jolie's jukebox on Indy 1031. My guest, Jolie Lewis. And uh, that song was Freddie King, a song called Going Down. And before that, we had Jolie Lewis's new album last man standing and that was a song with uh um bruce springsteen pink cadillac right did that take a long time to do this album uh it, it took quite a while to get all the people together on it yeah, yeah. so did you uh did you did, were you there every time there was someone there or did you like have tracks and they it was all over the place not every time yeah yeah who, who is your favourite, some of your favourite artists on here? I wouldn't want to say. <laughs> Keith Richards. Yeah, he was on there. That Kind of Fool was the name of that song. There's a lot of people on this. Jimmy Page, B.B. King, 
Bruce Springsteen, Mick Jagger, Ronnie Wood, Neil Young, Robbie Robson, John Fogarty, Keith Richards, Ringo Starr, Mel Haggard, Kid Rock, Rod Stewart, George Jones, Willie Nelson, Toby Keith, Eric Clapton, Little Richard, Delaney, Bramlett, Buddy Guy, Don Henley, Chris Christopherson. That's a lot of people on there. Yeah, there's a lot of people on there. And that's the reason why he told you he doesn't want to get into that, because all those people on there, he all knew. And they're all old-timer and old artists. And watch this fool. I don't even know who this is, so please forgive me, Mr. Jo uh, Joni's Jukebox. Uh, I just found his podcast. Watch him ask it again, or try to slide it in there again. And it's called uh, The Most Amazing Classic Rock and Roll Album Ever. Well, I didn't write that on it. He oh. <laughs> <laughs> said I didn't write that on it. That's good, that's good. Um, I, don't know what, I don't know what to ask you. I'm running out of things to think of. Uh, you could ask him several things. <laughs> Funny. Um, I'm lost for words, mate. Well, I said I did, but I did. I didn't. I know. I was. I'm very. Uh, I'm sorry for that. I don't believe him. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever meet Elvis? Of course you did. Yeah, sure, I met him. Yeah. You, you know, this fool is so such a fool. Do your research before you interview a legend. This guy, I'm sorry I'm getting upset, y'all. You know how I get. But this person is sitting here interviewing this elder man that's in his elder years. It's a legend. And he's going to ask him something stupid like, did he meet, meet Elvis? Why is, why, what does Elvis even have to do with him? He has his own identity. He's Jerry Lee, and if you knew anything about Jerry Lee, you know that him and Elvis knew one another. I mean, he just got through asking the man about the uh, Million Dollar Quartet, the picture. Well, who was in the Million Dollar Quartet? Elvis, Little Richard, Johnny Cash, and who? Jerry Lee. So why are you asking him again if he met you met Elvis? Get your stuff together just because you embarrassed yourself. By asking this man a question that he didn't want to be asked. And you could tell it's very uncomfortable for Mr. Jerry Lee. And Mr. Jerry Lee's had it with this dude. So let's go ahead and press play. Okay, well, did, did you think he was talented? Um, yeah, I thought he was pretty, pretty talented. Mm. He never wrote any music, though. No. But it, he had a good voice. Yeah, he did. But a lot of presence. Yeah. He was, he was a good showman. Yeah. That's what I look at Elvis. I look at him as more of a showman. Like, with the way he presented himself, his looks, probably, you know, his his charismatic personality, uh, the way he talked, you know, but he never wrote his songs. Dearly wrote songs. He knew how to play the piano. So, you know, there's a difference between being a performer and being an artist. I think Jerry Lee was an artist. I wish I would have seen him live. I wish I was at that show at the uh, at the Wembley. I wish I was. Okay, but you're interviewing. See, this is where people become disrespectful to me, because you are interviewing Jerry Lee Lewis. You're not talking to someone about Elvis. If you want to talk about Elvis, go to someone that loves Elvis, that is connected with Elvis, and knows you know that's their thing and you know just wants to talk about elvis go to go to one of the memphis mafia people priscilla loves to talk about elvis so go to her or somebody like that do a podcast with her but don't i mean why are you sitting here this is supposed to be about his song and what he's doing and you're turning around making it about elvis so i just i mean why can't it be about jerry lee